Then they they turn you guys heels again. Did you think it was time to to go heel? No, I didn't think. I, I yeah. there again. I think it was it was a big mistake. They could have left us go and brought us back later. Uh, I think that they were worried that we might go to WCW, but realistically, uh, we had already been asked to do that and turned it down. Really? Yeah. What, uh, what time frame was that? Uh, probably. Oh my goodness! I towards the le- just before we had turned baby turned heels again. Uh, and it wasn't because of any specific situation. Uh, but we had a standing, I had a standing relationship to go back and forth to Japan. So we were just going to do that. Uh, for years, I had been going to Japan for 12, 14 weeks a year. That's enough. You know, we were going to make a good amount of money. So working 12, 14, 16 weeks a year, that's all you need to do. Had some time off. Could have done that for a couple of years and then come back in. But I think there again, they said, well, this is what we got to do. And uh, it was a mistake. So. What were your impressions of Crush? We like Crush. Uh, that whole thing came about as I had during my years of Japan, I had consumed a lot of sushi. In particular, shrimp, lobster, crab. And I had built up a toxic level of iodine in my system. Whereas one bite of shrimp threw me into anaphylactic shock. And I had an out of body experience. And uh, the doctor equated it to somebody taking drugs and they take, you know, two lines of Coke and then. They get the same reaction, so they have to up it to three and four. And that just that half a sniff will kill them. And he said, that's what's in your system. It just builds up. And it takes seven years to leave your body. But as you're consuming it, that extends and extends and extends. So now I can't eat shrimp, <laughs> lobster, shell, any type of shellfish. Then I developed an allergic reaction to the bee stings as well as a result of that. So uh, that contributed to, you know, crush coming in. Because they, instead of giving Barry, I went through a series of tests for about four weeks before they could nail it down. Instead of giving him a four week vacation or a three week break, the tickets were already sold. They could have announced that demolitions not on the card tonight maybe given some tickets back but no they had to bring in uh, uh, substitutes they brought in uh, anvil demolition and piper demolition all these guys they could have extended that too and then rushed crush in and crush was young and green and inexperienced and he felt self-conscious because Barry and I were one take interviews. We didn't make the interview sessions two and three times. Boom. Tell us where we're at, who we're going against. When is it? That's it. And we'd take the interview. Boom. First take. Well, Crush hadn't done that before. Now he's put in a position that he doesn't feel comfortable because he's not sure if he's ready for it. And the pressure's on him, and he would make a mistake, and then they'd have to do it over again. And the guys say, demolition doesn't do two takes, three takes. It's one. It makes him nervous. It wasn't his fault. And then a substitute never is looked upon as the original. Right. Even if you're better, you're the substitute. Right. So he had a rough go of it but as far as traveling with us and being a a a good teammate he was it's just there again it's sad he died early died way too young yeah so too many good guys have passed on 
he was really in a no win situation, you know. Yeah. Uh, sad. Yeah, Crush the good guy. I worked at Crush before. Very, yeah, very, very nice, nice guy. Very, very sweet guy. Like he was just very gentle. You know, that's that was my impression of him. Like he's and very, he, very gentle, he had a good nice sense. He had a good sense of humor. Uh, he didn't rib you or anything, but he would. He liked telling jokes and having having fun. Uh, yeah, it's sad. We, we often think of of all of our friends that have passed on, and it doesn't matter if you're butthead or not. You're just too young for guys that we we associated with to pass on. Definitely, definitely. So basically, did was Vince's mind made up? Did he not feel confident to put you back in the ring full time? No, no. I think he I think he wanted to, but at that particular time, he had offered me a position in the office as an agent. And uh, I was fine with that. And it was going to be probably in about six or seven months down the road. And initially, I was given this position with this parameters and pay scale. And then a month later, that whittled down. And a month later, that whittled down. And then finally, about a month before it was supposed to take place, it was a part-time situation. And I just didn't feel comfortable. Uh, I didn't want that because I knew I could make more money and be home more going to Japan. So I I called Inoki's office and said, here's what I like to do. I'm going to give my notice. And uh, they said, great. And I was booked on the next tour within a month. And then I told Vince that I wasn't going to accept the position. And then, you know, I don't, I don't think that he likes people going against his decisions, but this was my decision. So that's what I chose to do. And uh, after years of talking to guys in that position, I think I made the right decision because not very many of them were happy. You know, a lot of responsibility, uh, a lot of flack, and uh, no decision making. You know, just and take you're the, it. You're on the road just as much. Yeah. You're the first one at the building and the last one to leave. We didn't mind that when we were working. Uh, but I don't need extra aggravation and headaches when I can put, eh, I'm going to make this much. I'm going to make that much in Japan. I think I'm going to Japan. Bill, let's talk about the Demolition Fan Club. Let, let people know how to get in touch with you, how to join this cl fan club. Well, it's, it's, it's going fantastic. You know, Tommy Fierro is responsible for setting it up. And that's on 80swrestling.com. People can log in there and uh, he's organized it. So there's a lot of uh, uh, pluses. You get a membership card, you get a print uh, done by Tony Atlas, signed print that he drew of us, uh, three or four different uh, uh, photos, signed photos of demolition, a poster, uh, a mass superstar, picture a uh, repo man picture and uh, a portion of the um oh you get a uh, demo gram where we make a phone call to the fans who purchased the i think there's two levels and I, i'm not sure what they're called gold or silver but one of the levels includes a uh on, in addition to all the items that you see and they're on the website uh, a demo gram where we make a phone a phone call to you and uh, then in addition to that, a portion of the membership goes to Tunnels to Towers, Wounded Warriors, Shriners, uh, St. Jude's, uh, Feed the Homeless. I think there's five or six charities that money goes directly to them from the membership. So that's a good cause and uh, for that, that respect. And it's been well received. And we thank the people, thank the fans, and uh, hope it continues. If people want to reach you to book you for any events, Bill, how can they, how can they do that? 
Uh, they can go on our uh, Instagram, search and destroy you, uh, that Tommy set up again, and a lot of the contacts, or go through Tommy Fierro at 80swrestlingcon.com, and then he's got our contact information, and we communicate with him back and forth. So he's been very influential and helpful. Awesome. Bill, this is perfect. This is awesome. Thank you very so much. good, my man. Good seeing you. <laughs> you too.